Hey everybody, welcome to the Master Wing channel. I do a lot of gameplay on this channel, but today is going to be more of a discussion. We do not have a podcast, but it's going to have more of a podcast feel. It's more like wingspan table talk, if you will. Um, ideas, suggestions, strategies, uh, things about the current game state. And um, I just thought they'd be interesting, kind of discuss those, see what you guys think. Of course, as always, let me know in the comments. But I just wanted to vocalize these thoughts, and uh, it's not going to be rapid fire, but uh, I'd like to have at least a discussion about some of these topics that I think are interesting to talk about. So let's get started with our first topic here. You can see them on the screen. Show me the money. Plain and simple, I want more monetization for the Monster Couch app. I highly doubt the Monster Couch team will watch this video and I know they have a smaller team, smaller development team, but that that excuse only lasts for so long, in my opinion. We need newer things. Uh, we are waiting a year, year and a half, two plus years for anything new to be introduced to the app. You know, you, you wait for Elizabeth and you Stone and Stonemaier Games to do their research, make the game in real life, and of course that takes time. I get that part. And then you wait an additional year, year and a half, two years for something new to come to the game online. And I really don't think that should happen. I, I don't want to see this game die out. I think this game deserves longevity. And charging us for features is not a bad thing. I'm not talking about throwing a bunch of ad revenue on the game. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about adding more to their store tab. They already have a store tab. Give us ways to support the business. Help us help you. I never thought I'd be asking a company to charge me for something, but I, I think they have a great foundation with, with this beautiful game that they've created, but they need more. We need newness, okay? Um, if you're playing every day, if you're a regular player, uh, I mean, you can only play three or four games in a row, but, but you're not going to do that every day. At least not me. I need some new features. I think if you play the game in real life, you can appreciate some of the accessories that Wingspan fans like to have. Uh, give us a uh, different bird feeder. Give us a display tray. Uh, the action cubes. Have you seen? Look at my uh, shorts on this channel. So many different bird meeples. And, and you could release that in the store tab. And I think players would be eager to personalize that online experience and kind of show off, if you will, their um, their collection or their purchases or their achievements. And I think that's just a huge opportunity. I think currently the, this store tab has the Oceania, Ex Oceania expansion to buy, the Euro expansion to buy. And then in the past, they've had a seasonal decorative pack <clears throat> where you... You know, you can change the background of your game. And, and that was cool. You know, we, we change that every week or so. Like, like that's fun. But uh, give us different egg colors or something. My favorite idea, honestly, comes from another game I've played, Marvel Snap. It's an online card game, and they have various skins for all the different cards. And I think alternate artwork would be a huge draw factor to keep players coming back to the game. You could release these in... $5 bundles, maybe $10 booster packs, 99 cent features. I don't know. But if you can go online and see players, like I said, show off their collection. You know, we've seen that wood duck a thousand times. But have you seen the black and white holographic wood duck with the babies in the cavity nest? You know, if you saw that, that might, you know... Get your attention more. It adds flavor and some uniqueness. You know, give us the whooping crane with the swamp background, the, the rainbow holographic gala, whatever. Um, I think that would be so cool to add. I think we've seen custom cards on social media. We've seen the, the well-received wingspan fan art pack. That's like my most watched video is the fan art pack. I think players were eager to see some some of the same birds. You don't have to change their powers, just different artwork. And you could even attach that to your achievements or, you know, you play the great horned owl a hundred times and then you unlock another version. Something like that. I, I, 
I would think that's not incredibly difficult to do. That's just me. I know a lot of people don't like the word monetization, but I would like more ways to customize your play experience, your online experience, and you know, making the board less boring. And I hate to say that because I, like I said, I love this game. I want it to go a long ways. But if you, if you don't have any new content for until, you know, two years, I mean, they've got what, three, three expansions or something left to go. And we maybe get that in the next eight years. That's a long time to wait. So Monster Couch, if you're out there, add some more stuff. I think they added a little button to go to their website if you want to buy some merchandise. Like, okay, that's something. But I'd like some more in-game features with the golden eggs and the golden Canada goose. Give us variants, skins, alternate artwork. That'd be cool. Maybe I'll show Marvel Snap stuff on the screen and, and kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. That was kind of a deep topic. So we will move on uh, to maybe a lighter subject. What a Blythe surprise. You know what's coming here. The Blythe Hornbill. You're saying, Master Wing, I've always thought this bird was good. What are you talking about? It's a great bird. But to me, the surprise comes in that you do not have to have a lot of eggs to make this bird worth it. And that's where the surprise is coming. This has not been an automatic grab for me, but I'm leaning towards more of an automatic grab. Have you passed this up in the tray? I've, I know I've seen my opponents pass it up and I've definitely passed it up. But I mentally, I think, that I have to have a Carolina Wren, an Eastern Bluebird, a Black-Bellied Whistling Duck, you know, something with <clears throat> a huge nest capacity. You know, we all love the bush tit with the star star nest. And, and then you would pick up the hornbill. But it just doesn't need, you know, four, five, six eggs. It, it doesn't need that much to be effective. You could use this bird effectively with like a, like a mountain chickadee. A mountain chickadee will do. Let's just take three eggs or even two eggs. You can find two eggs on a cavity nest somewhere. You discard those two eggs, that's four tucks, all right? So you're adding two additional points to the already seven point hornbill, so that's nine points. And then you take away the egg cost in the third slot, that's an eight point play. Just some quick math, all right? And then three eggs, I mean, it just grows and grows and grows. This doesn't have to be, you know, a five egg, 12 point bird for it to be effective. I think seven or eight points mid game, or even late game, that can beat some current engines or bird bombs that you already have. And I've passed this up in round one thinking, oh, I don't have the the burrowing owl with four star nest eggs on it, so it's not going to be worth it. But you have the two egg nut hatch on a cavity nest, and you can score seven points somewhere. So I just wanted to throw that out there. It's been a surprise for me in that regard. So... I like it. Tell me what you think, as always. Next topic we're going on to, it's going to be a little bit of a rant. The not-so-welcome, welcome swallow. Guys, what what do I do with this bird? I kind of pride myself on the Mastering Channel to use weird birds, unorthodox plays, quote, bad birds sometimes. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But we like to try different things here, and I'm having a tough time making this bird work for me. I think they should have made it three points. I think the one point welcome swallow is, is next to garbage. I do, and I hate to say that. You, I mean, let's just walk through it real quickly. You wanna use the wind played power. You wanna tuck a card under every bird in this habitat. Like, okay, I wanna maximize this. I want five tucks. So you wait to play four birds in that habitat, and then you play the Welcome Swallow. And the Welcome Swallow is one point for two worms. So you're at a negative one when you play it with the egg cost, negative one, and then you get your five tucks. 
So it's ultimately a four point play. Late game, that is so bad. There are so many other options, better options for a late game four point play. I get it has a star nest. I get it could help you with the citizen scientist bonus card. Maybe there's an end around goal that, that it snags you. But the window for this bird is just so small to me. If it was three points in that scenario I just mentioned, that'd be a plus one when you play it instead of a minus one. And then you get your five tucks and it'd be a six point play. It should have been worth three points. And then you go on the flip side of that. Early game, you play this early game or mid game in what the third slot in the wetlands, lay it down for a neutral play with the egg cost, and then you get your three tucks. You didn't help an engine, you didn't get an extra card, you just got three points. So early game, it's tough to make that bird work as well. The welcome swallow is unwelcome in, in my gameplay so far. So we went from Blythe Hornbill that I'm liking to welcome swallow I'm, I'm not liking much. So let's move on to a different topic. So the next topic I have is regarding bonus cards. What is the best bonus card? I'm not going to compare all of them. I want to look at one in particular that has definitely caught my attention. And I hope the Wingspan community knows about it, but maybe not so much because it's not online. But there's a question mark next to this topic because we haven't decided what's the best. And this isn't a conclusive thought. But I'm debating whether this one is is the strongest or even too strong. And that is Endangered Species Protector. Bro, Endangered Species Protector, you get three points for every bonus card bird you play. If a bird can snag you a bonus card, that qualifies for Endangered Species Protector. You get three points for bonus card birds. People, is that busted? Does that break the game? It's in Wingspan Asia. If you haven't played Wingspan Asia, you are in for a treat. It's good. But I played it recently with a group, and I scored 50 bonus points, and I had opportunity for more. I'm telling you, it blows the mental ceiling off of our 20 to 30 point, like, oh, you had a good bonus card game with 25 points. No. You can easily score 45 points with this, this card, I'm telling you. It takes the fear or worry out of whiffing a bonus card. And like I said, those three points just seems extra. Bell's Vireo is now a seven-point bird. Cassin's Finch, seven-point bird. Cerulean Warbler, seven-point bird. And then you tack on the bonus card that you draw. Think of the Atlantic Puffin. Eight-point bird, let's say you play it in the third slot, so we're at seven. Then you accidentally score eight points with Mechanical Engineer because you, you pulled it with the Puffin. So what's that? Eight points plus seven, we're at 15. And then, oh, by the way, give me my three extra points for Endangered Species Protector. An 18-point play. That's a 122 game to a 140 game with one play in that scenario i think mechanical engineer with oceania they brought us a great card like i said you can have no synergy a bunch of nests bunch of powers and you can almost accidentally score eight points on that one but this endangered species protector it's it's game deciding and i'm curious to know if you think the power on this is messed up I think if it was two points, I would lump it in with Omnivore Expert, Rodentologist, Falconer. That's fine. But I literally was just grabbing, sniping bonus card birds. And your opponent can't deny them all. They, they, they can't spin their game denying you bonus cards. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious if this is the best bonus card. Wingspan Asia... It was really fun, don't get me wrong, but I had more bonus points than what some players had bird points. And that, that's crazy to me. 
Um, it, it was just a totally different style of play. And this isn't a, you know, a, a, a rant topic either. I, I like scoring more points. I'm just wondering, is, is, this, is this the next automatic pickup? I think in the base game, Ulogist was an easy six points. You know, Ecologist, pretty easy six points. Mechanical Engineer, easy eight points. And then you've got Endangered Species Protector. Is that like an easy 12 points? I don't know. Can you find four bonus card birds and score 12 points? That seems like a lot. Okay. Um, let's move on to a unpopular opinion. I don't know. It might not be unpopular, but, but we could get some angry comments on this one. My unpopular opinion. Are you ready? We, we've known to we've been known to have some of these the Oceania expansion did not enhance the base game it replaced the base game that's my thesis statement for this topic the Oceania expansion has replaced the base game and, and before you get all up in arms let me just tell you my my thinking the base game, if you were good, in my opinion, a lot of your games were funneled towards a grassland. Occasionally you'd have a full tuck, rarely you'd have a forest engine. The Oceania play mat and the available nectar gives such a variety of ways to win. And this isn't my only point, people. Stick around. Such a variety of ways to win that you can... It, 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 in, it replaces the base game. I'm just going back to my thesis statement. You're no longer funneled to the grassland. The grassland is still viable, but you can play bird bombs. The forest engine is back. The full tucks are even better. And when's the last time that you gained one food in Oceania? I, I can't even remember the last time I gained one food. When's the last time you drew just one card in Oceania? With the play mat design, you can at least in the first slot gain two food or two cards. And I just can't remember the last time I, I only drew one card. And in the base game, unfortunately, that's how it is. It feels clunky, it feels slow. And let's go back to the core of why Wingspan is fun. And that is to play birds. That's a huge reason why I think Oceania has replaced the base game. What's more fun? to play 10 birds or 13. I'm sorry, what's more fun to score 100 or 120? You know the answer to those questions. I just think, and it hurts me a little bit to say this because I was a base game loyalist and I'm not talking about the birds. I'm not saying the Oceania birds replace the base game birds. I play a lot of base game birds and that's a tribute to how good and how reliable and viable those base game birds were and are. But if you go back to the core fundamental of the game and you're saying, no, Master Wang, it's the artwork. It's the uh, engine building. Well, you can't see the artwork and you can't build an engine without playing birds. And I'm not a nectar hater. I, I, I don't see... You know, there, there's definitely opinions out there that the nectar is, is too much or, or whatever. I just don't see it that way. I'm still grabbing other resources. It brings another strategy to the game as far as denying your opponent uh, for the pink stuff. But I just think once I've played Oceania, it's hard to go back to gaining one food and drawing one card and just throw stuff in the grassland and, and, and hope you win. Unfortunately, I think that's how the base game is. I'm sorry, it's an unpopular opinion. I, I don't see myself, I don't see a lot of players saying, no, I, I don't want these 95 Oceania birds. It's not for me. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna hand select the birds that have nectar on the cards? Like, no, you're not gonna do that. Are you going to use two food and, and force down birds that require nectar? No. Once you've introduced these birds, you've introduced this food resource, you've introduced this, this design, I, I feel like 
why would I go back? Why do I want to go back to scoring 95 points? I'm sorry, guys. But, but not really. Maybe Wingspan Asia will change my mind. But I plan on playing Wingspan Asia Birds with Nectar. It, it gives me pace. It gives me tempo. The engine building isn't gone. There's just a variety of ways to win. I'm going on and on, but um, those are my reasons. Tell me what you think. I love the birds. I just think, you know what? I think they could have given us a little bit more grassland in Oceania. I'll say that. It's not a perfect game, but it definitely brings variety. I, I used to think pink powers were always going to be good with a uh, base game. Now pink powers, the cowbirds, and whatnot, it might be a wasted play because you don't know how your opponent's getting eggs. I think that's cool. Let's move on to how we're going to conclude the video, and that is a in-game combo that we stumbled on, and I think it's kind of fun to end this discussion with some strategy. I think this combo would work best in a full tuck scenario where you don't have any grassland. All right, you're digging, you're scoring, and you, you've built a seven, eight point engine, who knows? And uh, you have that mute swan, the chiff chaff, the main duck, whatever you have. And you've been digging for Benelli's or Eastern Imperial Eagle, and you just haven't found it. Here's my in game combo I'm calling it the GGP, the Golden Gray Pippet. All right, licensing. The GGP combo. First, you've dug through the game and you have some extra cards in your hand. You play the Golden Headed Cysticola for one point. Woo, great job. You get to play another bird with a one egg discount. So then you play the Gray Headed Mannequin, the Yellow Power Bird for two points. Sweet. Now, at the end of the game, using the Gray Headed Mannequin, you play the Australasian Pippet. For three points plus three tucks, it's a nine-point play in total if you combine all that with the yellow powers. A nine-point play, and it requires zero eggs. That's right, people. In a full tuck scenario when you don't have eggs, I think that's a cool little combo to play off. You could switch the pipit out for the magpie lark. If you had two eggs in the forest, then you could play another bird. That'd be dirty. You could switch out the Pippet for the Plains Wanderer and try your luck with bonus cards. You know, whatever. But the Australasian Pippet in that scenario would guarantee you three tucks and a nine point play could beat a seven or eight point tucking engine. You do need to have collected two worms and two seeds to pull off this combo. I think that's doable, even in a full tuck scenario. Try out that combo, let me know what you think. It's not mind-blowing, but I thought it was cool because you see those birds and you're like, one point, two point, three point, who cares? But then you put them together for nine points and you're like, well, I didn't get the eagle, but I got the GGP combo. All right. Man, I hope you liked it. Uh, some thinking out loud. This is our first one. If this episode is well-received, you know, maybe we can do another one and uh, have a guest on here and we can give our takes, differing opinions give our two cents. I'm not saying we argue, but, um, you know, if you were thinking of some things that you want to rebuttal on this and you could see yourself on the Master Wing channel, private message me in the Wingspan Discord and maybe we can make that happen. Instead of an outro, I'm just going to say I hope you all have a blessed day. See ya.